Uh, okay, tell us when action's on. Uh, action. Right, Vlad, how are you? You shouldn't be smoking on camera, Brian. <laughs> Nor should you, Angus. Come on. True, true. Yes, we better have our last one. Oh, Malcolm's smoking as well. Cliff, how are you? I'm good. Hey, you why you're not smoking? Yeah. And right. Now, listen, um, long time between drinks this time, as far as Melbourne's concerned. Why? <laughs> Why? I mean, not how are you? How are you? Well, how have you been? How's I mean, the like... family? How's the kid? Uh, uh, long time in between drinks. <laughs> I wouldn't be working in between that, the album. I mean, it's not as though I've well, been sitting twiddling my thumbs. Uh, after the last album, we we're, toured we're America, and then we and then we toured Europe. And then and then we started the album uh, last year, maybe sometime about uh, no, no, we rehearsed uh, and then we started went to the studio about November, end of November. So start of November, big up. And then uh, we had Christmas off, uh, went to Rio, we did some we did a couple of gigs in Rio back in the studio, so we've been working, you know, it's not as well, I haven't been doing anything. You know. Well, no, no, going right back to the, the, the first days of ACDC, right? <coughs> um, and when you were sort of like working in Australia, did you ever imagine, I mean, here we are in some... <laughs> palace. <laughs> palace in New York, right? Wait, I'm... No, but seriously, I mean, going back to that time, and your brother had, had an amazing success uh, through his own life as far as, like, the easy bits were concerned. Did you ever imagine that it would get to this? I'm being serious, I mean, <laughs> please I'll, be I'll, serious. I'll, I'll try. E? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was very <laughs> No, I think it started out as fun, which we still try and maintain, as you can pick up here in the lads. But uh, no, we didn't imagine it to go any further than Australia. Right. But the world was there, and uh, we think as things picked up. Then, but we had to do exactly what we did in Europe and in the States is what we did in Australia. I don't think a lot of people realise that. They thought we were just overnight successes in England or in America. But really, that was all yeah, what we had to do on the Australian. We had to do a lot of work. Okay, I mean, going back to, to, to 75, 76, and the thing I maintain, I mean, where they, um, when they analyse, um, say, punk rock for a start, and say, like, even with the Sex Pistols with, with, with Johnny and, and, and Sid Vicious, at the same time of when they were breaking and sort of making a big name for themselves, you were there at the Marquee, and at that stage, and the Marquee Club in London has these ups and downs being a live club, of where literally no one was going until you, you got there, and you were, I mean, I'll never forget one night in 75, you were packing the joint out, you know? Was it a matter of the fact that people really wanted, even in England, wanted to see live music again? I think it was more the giveaway ticket. Pretty <laughs> bit. <laughs> Kills a line, doesn't he? <laughs> Sorry. Nah, it's, I think that, yeah, there's just the word of mouth thing. It's, word of mouth makes anything, I think. You know? I mean, no amount of TV, radio or something. If there's something out there with the, with the kids, especially, you know, especially with us, you know, I mean, look at this guy. I mean, who would, who would call that? I mean, rugged, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think sometimes, he's right, I think sometimes uh, word of mouth's more powerful than any media type of thing can be, you know. Once a few, if a few kids go and see a, a show and they really like it, tell a few friends and, you know, they'll always be there. They'll tell a so few he more. told four, I told five. So, uh, like, you know, you tell a few buddies, tell your mother, you know, you can, get everybody there. It's, it, it is true. Really. Well, I mean, the, the other shock was, I mean, through that same period, and, and especially back in Australia, and then the ABBA thing had broken, and I went over and did an, an interview with ABBA uh, in Stockholm, and I got a, a great shock, and it was a culture shock to me, to suddenly see in, 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 in the record shops around Stockholm, I mean, this ACDC sign, which I mean, and suddenly I realised that Europe were really big on ACDC. When did you become aware that Europe had become big on you? You didn't see any ABBAs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't actually. <laughs> well, I don't. 
it's something we never got a chance to sort of sit back and look and chop up, you know? But I think it just all sort of happened. When the whole world started taking really notice of his voice, really, let there be rock. From that album on, everything started to come into place. That's when we started selling out in Europe. When we come here, people were starting to take notice. The next album, Why Where the Hell Broke, is here. Right. You know, and in Europe, it, it was our biggest and still is one of the biggest albums we've had. Here.